Small Museum was opened in February 2012, February 14th actually, on the anniversary of the St. Valentine's Day Massacre. Uh, we've been open for four years now. Uh, so this building uh, was completed in 1933. It's one of the few historic buildings in Las Vegas. It used to be the federal courthouse and the post office actually, so a lot of very interesting trials happened here. Uh, this building was supposed to close down and be demolished, uh, but they gave the option to the, the city to buy it for a dollar as long as they could renovate it uh, and make it something cultural. Um, and they thought originally that they might want to do an art museum until Oscar Goodman stepped in and said, you know what we should do? We should do a mob museum. Oscar Goodman used to be a mob lawyer and it made a lot of sense to put something, put something like the mob museum in a town that the mob built. We have exhibits about organized crime and law enforcement, and it's not just a focus on Las Vegas, it's really the national story. The mob story is the American story. It's U.S. history told through organized crime. You know, it's, it's been present here since the beginning. We've been extremely popular since our opening. We've had over a million visitors in just those four years, and, and it's really neat to have a museum about the mob and Vegas history, and all of these things happen in such a historic place. All right, so my job here at the Mob Museum is Curator of Collection, which is a pretty cool title, uh, and it's a pretty cool job. I get to work with all of the stuff within the cases. These are the artifacts, the historic objects, the longer story is that I manage both the intellectual property rights uh, for all of the artifacts as well as the physical well-being of them. Uh, so it's kind of twofold on that. A typical day could be anything from making up a loan agreement or it could be something a little more exciting like getting into a case and uh, cleaning an object um, or acquiring something new for the collection. And we're always growing our collection here at the Mob Museum. So you never know what's gonna happen. It's very exciting. Well, I am the education manager here at the Mob Museum. Um, I train and maintain my staff of educators and I do a lot of research here. You know, I do a lot of research within the building, but also outside of the text that's on the walls. We have to address a lot of issues here, um, from everything from immigration and prohibition to what's happening today. Like for example, we're going to be putting in an El Chapo exhibit here in another couple of days actually. So we've got a lot of cool stuff going on and I'm involved with a lot of it. Not to mention guided tours that we offer every day. We have a lot of fun doing it and every tour is different. We've specifically designed the guided tour so that every person who is giving a guided tour does their own take on the guided tour. Everybody's interested in different things and you're a better tour guide if you're passionate about what you're talking about. So we've specifically designed it as a skeleton that each individual guide gets to flesh out on their own. I was a tour guide back in North Carolina when I was in high school. I worked for the Newbold White House and was a docent there. And I have loved being a tour guide ever since. It's one of the things that got me you know, really interested, really passionate about working in museums as opposed to working in a classroom. And as far as choosing history as a major, I knew, I've known since I was a tiny child that I was going to be a history major when I was in college. Uh, it's, some of my earliest memories are reading history books. People have this misconception, I think, that you can't get a job with history, that history is a useless degree, and it's absolutely a myth. Uh, public history has opened so many doors for me. There has never been a point since I graduated in 2007 that I haven't been able to find employment within the history field. Uh, I absolutely love what I do, um, and uh, I'm very excited that public history provided the opportunity for me to work in this field. You learn more about humanity and you learn more about the way that, that people work when you study history than anything else I've ever studied. But even if you don't want to stick with history and work in a classroom or work in a museum, it can, it can be a jumping point towards being a lawyer or being an activist or being a politician. It can be great for all kinds of things because if, it's not, if you can't study history, if you can't understand how history works, how humanity works, then you're not going to do very well understanding current events. And, and seeing the way that history and current events collide, so to speak, it's not, they're not separate things. They're definitely the same, 
different size of the same point or, or a different size of a continuum, so to speak. Um, there, it, it allowed me to see that I don't have to study history and stay in the past. I can study history and still keep looking forward. I, I grew up all over the world, actually. My uh, family moved a lot. I lived in Florida a couple times, Texas, Pennsylvania, but I actually lived overseas in Singapore for six years. Um, I, from when I was 12 to 18, and then when I was 18, I went to Appalachian State University and just fell in love with everything about the town, about the university. I just knew that it was the place that I wanted to be. So I decided that Boone would be my hometown and that that would be the first place that I would pick to live and make it where I'm from. So I tell people Boone now, that's where I'm from. <laughs> Uh, I'm a military kid. I was a, a kid of a Coast Guardsman. Uh, I'm originally from Alaska. Uh, we've moved a lot in my time. Being a military kid, that's common. So Alaska and North Carolina and back and back again. Um, and I ended up going to high school in, at Johnny Holmes High School in Eden, North Carolina, and then choosing App. This is the first time, when I went to App, it's the first time that I was able to choose where I moved to. And it was something that it was important to me, uh, so I made a choice to go to Appalachian, and it's it's been wonderful. Making that choice is probably the best choice in my of my life. Um, it helped me develop who I am. I, I wouldn't be who I am if it weren't for App and the things that I, the people that I met there, the best friends I've ever had, I've met at App. Um, the the best mentors I've ever had, I've had at App. If I had gone anywhere else. It, I would be a very different person, I think. So I started at the Mob Museum in uh, June 2012. It was a couple months after the museum had first opened, uh, and I was meeting all of my new co-workers, and one of them said, oh, you studied public history? We've got another girl who studied public history. Here, here, come meet Diana. And I meet Diana, <laughs> and she, I'm like, oh, where did you study public history? And she goes, oh, you probably haven't heard of it. It's just this, it's a small school up in the mountains of North Carolina, and I'm just like, no way. <laughs> like, really? And it's like, oh, Appalachian State? And it was just like a reunion right there. I was like, me too, Appalachian State. And I don't know what your reaction was. You, did, you looked like you didn't believe me. <laughs> well, so... It's such a small school, and I'm out here in the middle of the desert, you know, in the 2,500 miles from Boone. Yeah. But as soon as as soon as we both realized that we'd both been to App together, it, actually at the same time, although we didn't know it, I was a freshman when she was a senior, and it was it, it was shocking. Like, I I really couldn't believe it. And, oh my gosh, there's somebody else who we went we went to the same university, we went to the same program, we had some of the same professors. Gosh, 2,500 miles away from home, and here we are, two cubicles away from each other. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we definitely bonded right away about both being public history students and being Appalachian alumni. Uh, when when Carolyn and I met uh, here at the Mob Museum, it it was an immediate connection for us, having both been to Appalachian. It, whereas we might not have made that immediate friendship otherwise. Yeah, I'm, I still connect with with. App alums all all around the country. So, and when, when people come in, if I happen to see somebody from Boone, there is an immediate, there's an, an immediate friendship. You know, whether we knew each other or not before, there's an immediate friendship. Yeah, you know, they, there's just a connection there. I think back to the Appalachian community, no matter where you are, um, and, and it's really great to have that. And it's just such a bonding experience to have been a part of such a great university and, and a great little town. Thank you.